Part of. And after this, the story telleth us. That she him gave the fair bay steed. The which she wons one of Troilus. And eke a brooch, and that was little need. That Troilus was, she gave this Diomede. And eke, the bet from sorrow him to relieve. She made him wear a pencil of her sleeve. Pendant less than eighty-six greater than. I find eke in the story elsewhere. When through the body hurt was Diomede. By Troilus, she wept many a tear. When that she saw his wide wounds bleed. And that she took to keep him good heed, tend, care for. And. For to heal him of his sorrows smart. Men say, Ionoti, that she gave him her heart. No not. And yet, when pity had thus completed the triumph of inconstancy, she made bitter moan over her falseness to one of the noblest and worthiest men that ever was. But it was now too late to repent, and at all events she resolved that she would be true to Diomede, all the while weeping for pity of the absent Troilus, to whom she wished every happiness. The tenth day, meantime, had barely dawned, when Troilus, accompanied by Pandarus, took his stand on the walls, to watch for the return of Cressida. Till noon they stood, thinking that every corner from afar was she. Then Troilus said that doubtless her old father bore the parting ill, and had detained her till after dinner, so they went to dine, and returned to their vain observation on the walls. Troilus invented all kinds of explanations for his mistress's delay, now, her father would not let her go till eve, now, she would ride quietly into the town after nightfall, not to be observed, now, he must have mistaken the day. For five or six days he watched, still in vain, and with decreasing hope. Gradually his strength decayed, until he could walk only with a staff. Answering the wondering inquiries of his friends, by saying that he had a grievous malady about his heart. One day he dreamed that in a forest he saw Cressida in the embrace of a boar, and he had no longer doubt of her falsehood. Pandarus, however, explained away the dream to mean merely that Cressida was detained by her father, who might be at the point of death. And he counseled the disconsolate lover to write a letter, by which he might perhaps get at the truth. Troilus complied, entreating from his mistress, at the least, a letter of hope, and the lady answered, that she could not come now, but would so soon as she might. At the same time, making him great feast, and swearing that she loved him best, of which he found but bottomless behest, which he found but groundless promises. Day by day increased the woe of Troilus. He laid himself in bed, neither eating, nor drinking, nor sleeping, nor speaking, almost distracted by the thought of Cressida's unkindness. He related his dream to his sister Cassandra, who told him that the boar betokened Diomede, and that, wheresoever his lady was, Diornede certainly had her heart, and she was his, weep if thou wilt, or leave, for, out of doubt, this Diomede is in. And thou art out. Troilus, enraged, refused to believe Cassandra's interpretation, as well, he cried, might such a story be credited of Alcestis, who devoted her life for her husband. And in his wrath he started from bed, as though all whole had him why made a leech, physician, resolving to find out the truth at all hazards. The death of Hector meanwhile enhanced the sorrow which he endured. But he found time to write often to Cressida, beseeching her to come again and hold her truth. Till one day his false mistress, out of pity, wrote him again, in these terms. Cupid's son, and sample of goodly head, beauty, excellence. O sword of knighthood, source of gentleness. How might a white in torment and in dread. And healless, you send as yet gladness. Devoid of health. I heartless, I sick, I in distress. Since ye with me, nor I with you, may deal. You neither send I may nor heart nor heal. Your letters full, the paper all white plaint, covered with. Calm moved have mine heart's pit, complainings. I have eke seen with tears all depainted. Your letter, and how ye require me. To come again, the which yet may not be. But why, lest that this letter found in were. No mention I make now for fear. Grievous to me, God what, is your unrest. Your haste, and that the God's ordinance impatience. 
it seemeth not ye take as for the best. Nor other thing is in your remembrance. As think me, but only your pleasance. But be not wroth, and that I you beseech. For that I tarry is all for wicked speech. To avoid malicious. Gossip. For I have heard well more than I wend weaned, thought. Touching us too, how things have stood. Which I shall with dissimuling amend. And, be not wroth, I have eke understood. How ye any do but hold me on hand, less than eighty-seven greater than. But now no force, I cannot in you guess no matter. But Allah truth and Allah gentleness. Come and I will, but yet in such disjoint jeopardy, critical. I stand now, that what year or what day position. That this shall be, that can I not appoint. But in effect I pray you, as I may. For your good word and for your friendship I. For truly, while that my life may dure. As for a friend, ye may in me assure. Depend on me. Yet pray I you, on evil ye not take do not take it ill. That it is short, which that I to you write. I dare not, where I am, well letters make. Nor never yet any could I well endite. Eat great effect men write in place light, men write great matter. Th intent is all, and not the letter space, in little space. And fare now well, God have you in his grace. Love Oster C. Though he found this letter, all strange, and thought it like, a callens of change, less than eighty-eight greater than Troilus could not believe his lady so cruel as to forsake him. But he was put out of all doubt, one day that, as he stood in suspicion and melancholy, he saw a, coat, armor, borne along the street, in token of victory, before Deiphobus his brother. Deiphobus had won it from Diomede in battle that day. And Troilus, examining it out of curiosity, found within the collar a brooch which he had given to Cressida on the morning she left Troy, and which she had pledged her faith to keep for ever in remembrance of his sorrow and of him. At this fatal discovery of his lady's untruth. Great was the sorrow and plaint of Troilus. But forth her coarse fortune I gone to hold. Cressida loved the son of Tydeus. And Troilus must weep in cares cold. Such is the world, whoso it can behold. In each estate is little heart's rest. God lend us each to take it for the best. Grant. In many a cruel battle Troilus wrought havoc among the Greeks, and often he exchanged blows and bitter words with Diomede, whom he always specially sought, but it was not their lot that either should fall by the other's hand. The poet's purpose, however, he tells us, is to relate, not the warlike deeds of Troilus, which Dares has fully told, but his love fortunes. Beseeching every lady bright of hue. And every gentlewoman, what she be. Whatsoever she be. Albeit that Cressida was untrue. That for that guilt ye be not wroth with me. Ye may her guilt in other books see. And gladder I would writen, if you lest. Of Penelope's truth, and good Alcest. Nor say I not this only all for men. But most for women that betrayed be. Through false folk, God give them sorrow, Amen. That with their greet wit and subtlety. Betray you, and this cometh me. To speak, and in effect you all I pray. Beware of men, and hearken what I say. Go, little book, go, little tragedy. There God my Maker, yet ere that I die. So send me might to make some comedy. But, little book, no making thou envy, be envious of no poetry less than eighty-nine greater than. But subject be unto all poesy. And kiss the steps, whereas thou sayest space. Of Virgil, Ovid, Homer, Lucan, Stace. And, for there is so great diversity. In English, and in writing of our tongue. So pray I God, that none miswrite thee. Nor thee mismeter for default of tongue. And read whereso thou be, or else sung. That thou be understanding, God I, seech. Beseech. But yet to purpose of my rather speech. Earlier subject less than ninety greater than. The wrath, as I began you for to say. 
Of Troilus the Greeks bought dear. For thousands his hands made day, made to die. As he that was withouten any peer. Save in his time Hector, as I can hear. But, well away. Save only God's will. Dispiteously him slew the fierce ackle. And when that he was slain in this manner. His light ghost full blissfully is went spirit. Up to the hollowness of the seventh sphere less than ninety one greater than. In converse leaving every element. And there he saw, with full advisement, observation, understanding. Th. Erratic stars hearkening harmony. With sounds full of heave and ly melody. And down from thence fast he gone advise consider, look on. This little spot of earth, that with the sea. Embraced is. And fully gone despise. This wretched world, and held all vanity. To respect of the plan felicity in comparison with. That is in heave and above, and, at the last, the full felicity. Where he was slain his looking down he cast. And in himself he laughed right at the woe. Of them that wept for his death so fast. And damned all our works, that follow so condemned. The blind lust, the which that may not last and shooten all our heart on heaven cast. While we should. And forth he went, shortly for to tell. Whereas Mercury sorted him to dwell. Allotted less than ninety-two greater than. Such fine hath, lo. This Troilus for love. End. Such fine hath all his great worthiness. Exalted royal rank. Such fine hath his estate royal above. Such fine his lust, such fine hath his noblesse. Pleasure. Such fine hath false world's brittleness. Fickleness, instability. And thus began his loving of Cresside. As I have told. And in this wise he died. O young and fresh folky, he or she, of either sex. In which that love upgroweth with your age. Repair home from worldly vanity. And of your heart upcast the visage, lift up the countenance. To thilk God. That after his image of your heart. You made, and think that all is but a fair. This world that passeth soon, as flowers fair. And love him, the which that, right for love. Upon a cross, our souls for to bay, by, redeem. First starf, and rose, and sits in heaven above. Died. For he will false no white, dare I say, deceive, fail. That will his heart all holy on him lay. And since he best to love is, and most meek. What needeth feigned loves for to seek? Lo! Here of Paynim's cursed old rites. Pagans. Lo! Here what all their gods may avail. Lo! Here this wretched world's appetites. End and reward. Lo! Hear the fine and guerdon for travail, of labor. Of Jove, Apollo, Mars, and such rascal rabble less than ninety-three greater than. Lo! Hear the form of old clerk's speech. In poetry, if ye their book seech. Seek, search. L'envoy of Chaucer. O moral gower! Less than ninety-four greater than this book I direct. To thee, and to the philosophical strode, less than ninety-five greater than. To vouchsafe, where need is, to correct. Of your benignities and zeal's good. And to that soothfast Christ that starf on rude died on the cross. With all my heart, of mercy ever I pray. And to the Lord right thus I speak and say. Thou one, and two, and three, etern on live. Eternally living. That reignest I in three, and two, and one. Uncircumscribed, and all mayst circumscribe, comprehend. From visible and invisible phone foes. Defend us in thy mercy every one. So make us, Jesus, for thy mercy thine, worthy of thy mercy. For love of maid and mother thine benign. Explicitly bear Troili et Cresidus. Less than ninety-six greater than. Notes to Troilus and Cressida. 1. 
the double sorrow, first his suffering before his love was successful, and then his grief after his lady had been separated from him, and had proved unfaithful. 2. Tisiphone, one of the Eumenides, or Furies, who avenged on men in the next world the crimes committed on earth. Chaucer makes this grim invocation most fitly, since the Trojans were under the curse of the Eumenides, for their part in the offense of Paris in carrying off Helen, the wife of his host Menelaus. And thus impiously sinning against the laws of hospitality. 3. See Chaucer's description of himself in, The House of Fame, and note 11 to that poem. 4. The Palladium, or image of Pallas, daughter of Triton and foster sister of Athena, was said to have fallen from heaven at Troy, where Elos was just beginning to found the city. And Elos erected a sanctuary, in which it was preserved with great honor and care, since on its safety was supposed to depend the safety of the city. In later times a palladium was any statue of the goddess Athena kept for the safeguard of the city that possessed it. 5. O, oh, very God, O oh, true divinity. Addressing Cressida. 6. Bisconce, as if to say, as much as to say. The word represents, quasi dices, in Boccaccio. See note 5 to the Sompner's tale. 7. Eft, another reading is, oft. 8. Artin, constrain, Latin, arcio. 9. The song is a translation of Petrarch's 88th sonnet, which opens thus, Samer non e, che dunque e quel chi sento. 10. If maugre me, if, I burn, in spite of myself. The usual reading is, if harm agree me equals if my hurt contents me, but evidently the antithesis is lost which Petrarch intended when, after, esse mia voglia ardo, he wrote, esse mal mio grado equals if against my will. And Yuri's glossary points out the probability that in transcription the words, if that maugre me, may have gradually changed into, if harm agre me. 11. The 3rd of May seems either to have possessed peculiar favor or significance with Chaucer personally, or to have had a special importance in connection with those May observances of which the poet so often speaks. It is on the third night of May that Palamon, in the Knight's Tale, breaks out of prison, and at early morn encounters in the forest Arceta, who has gone forth to pluck a garland in honor of May. It is on the third night of May that the poet hears the debate of the cuckoo and the nightingale, and again in the present passage the favored date recurs. 12. Went, turning, from Anglo-Saxon, Wendan, German, Wenden. The turning and tossing of uneasy lovers in bed is, with Chaucer, a favorite symptom of their passion. See the fifth, statute, in the court of love. 13. Procne, daughter of Pandion, king of Attica, was given to wife to Tyrus in reward for his aid against an enemy but Tyrus dishonored Philomela, Procne's sister, and his wife, in revenge, served up to him the body of his own child by her. Tyrus, infuriated, pursued the two sisters, who prayed the gods to change them into birds. The prayer was granted, Philomela became a nightingale, Procne a swallow, and Tyrus a hawk. 14. Fished fair, a proverbial phrase which probably may be best represented by the phrase, done great execution. 15. The fair gem virtuous, possessing none of the virtues which in the Middle Ages were universally believed to be inherent in precious stones. 16. The crop and root, the most perfect example. See note 29 to the knight's tale. 17. Eam, uncle. The mother's brother, still used in Lancashire. Anglo-Saxon, Eam, German, Bohem. 18. Dardanus, the mythical ancestor of the Trojans, after whom the gate is supposed to be called. 19. All the other gates were secured with chains, for better defense against the besiegers. 20. Happy day, good fortune, French, Bonheur. Both, happy day, and, happy hour, are borrowed from the astrological fiction about the influence of the time of birth. 21. Horn, and nerve, and rind, the various layers or materials of the shield, called Bogrian in the Iliad, which was made from the hide of the wild bull. 22. His brother, Hector. 23. Who gives me drink? 
who has given me a love potion, to charm my heart thus away? 24. That plated she full oft in many a fold, she deliberated carefully, with many arguments this way and that. 25. Through which I might stand in worse plight, in a worse position in the city, since she might through his anger lose the protection of his brother Hector. 26. I am not religious, I am not in holy vows. See the complaint of the nuns in, The Court of Love. 27. The line recalls Milton's, dark with excessive bright. 28. No wheel is worth, that may no sorrow dream, the meaning is, that whosoever cannot endure sorrow deserves not happiness. 29. French, ver, glass. 30. From cast of stones wear him in the wear, let him beware of casting stones in battle. The proverb in its modern form warns those who live in glass houses of the folly of throwing stones. 31. Western, to west or wester, to decline towards the west, so Milton speaks of the morning star as sloping towards heaven's descent, his westering wheel. 32. A pike with ass's feet etc. This is merely another version of the well-known example of incongruity that opens the Ars Poetica of Horace. 33. Trister, Trist, a preconcerted spot to which the beaters drove the game, and at which the sportsmen waited with their bows. 34. A cankerdort, a condition or fit of perplexed anxiety, probably connected with the word kink meaning in sea phrase a twist in an rope, and, as a verb, to twist or entangle. 35. They feel in times, with vapor etern, they feel in their seasons, by the emission of an eternal breath or inspiration, that God loves, and. 36. The idea of this stanza is the same with that developed in the speech of Theseus at the close of the knight's tale, and it is probably derived from the lines of Boethius, quoted in note 91 to that tale. 37. In this and the following lines reappears the noble doctrine of the exalting and purifying influence of true love, advanced in, the court of love, the cuckoo and the nightingale, and. 38. Weir, a trap or enclosed place in a stream, for catching fish. See note 10 to the assembly of fowls. 39. Nor might one word for shame to it say, nor could he answer one word for shame, at the stratagem that brought Cressida to implore his protection. 40. All and ere he malapert, nor made a vow and nor was so bold to sing a fool's mass, i.e. Although he was not over forward and made no confession, of his love, or was so bold as to be rash and ill-advised in his declarations of love and worship. 41. Pandarus wept as if he would turn to water. So, in the squire's tale, did Canais weep for the woes of the falcon. 42. If I break your defense, if I transgress in whatever you may forbid, French, defendra, to prohibit. 43. These lines and the succeeding stanza are addressed to Pandarus, who had interposed some words of incitement to Cressida. 44. In, The Court of Love, the poet says of Avanter, that, his ancestry of kin was to liar. And the stanza in which that line occurs expresses precisely the same idea as in the text. Vain boasters of ladies' favors are also satirized in, The House of Fame. 45. Nice, silly, stupid. French, Niais. 46. Reheating, is read by preference for, Rikhesa, which stands in the older printed editions, though Rikhesa, certainly better represents the word used in the original of Boccaccio, Divisia, meaning abundance or wealth. 47. Depart it so, for wide where is wist how that there is diversity record betwixt things like, as I have leered, i.e. Make this distinction, for it is universally known that there is a great difference between things that seem the same, as I have learned. 48. Frape, the set, or company, French, frappe, a stamp, on coins, a set, of molds. 49. To be, in the wind, of noisy magpies, or other birds that might spoil sport by alarming the game, was not less desirable than to be on the lee side of the game itself that the hunter's presence might not be betrayed by the scent. In the wind of, thus signifies not to windward of, but to leeward of, that is, 
in the wind that comes from the object of pursuit. 50. Boda fremd and tame, both foes and friends, literally, both wild and tame, the sporting metaphor being sustained. 51. The lovers are supposed to say, that nothing is wanting but to know the time at which they should meet. 52. A tale of Wade, see note 5 to the merchant's tale. 53. Saturn, and Jove, in Cancer joined were, a conjunction that imported rain. 54. Smoky rain, an admirably graphic description of dense rain. 55. For the force of, cold, see note 22 to the nun's priest's tale. 56. God 7, the divinities who gave their names to the seven planets, which, in association with the seven metals, are mentioned in the canon's yeoman's tale. 57. Assayed, experienced, tasted. See note 6 to the squire's tale. 58. Now is it better than both two were lorn, better this happy issue, than that both two should be lost, through the sorrow of fruitless love. 59. Made him such feast, French, Louis fit fate, made holiday for him. 60. The cock is called, in, the assembly of fowls, the horloge of Thorpe's light. The clock of little villages, and in the nun's priest's tale Chanticleer knew by nature each ascension of the equinoctial, and, when the sun had ascended fifteen degrees, then crew he, that it might not be amended. Here he is termed the, common astrologer, as employing for the public advantage his knowledge of astronomy. 61. Fortuna Major, the planet Jupiter. 62. When Jupiter visited Alcmena in the form of her husband Amphitryon, he is said to have prolonged the night to the length of three natural nights. Hercules was the fruit of the union. 63. Chaucer seems to confound Titan, the title of the sun, with Tithonus, or Tython, as contracted in poetry, whose couch Aurora was wont to share. 64. So, in, Loxley Hall, Tennyson says that, the sorrow's crown of sorrow is remembering better things. The original is in Dante's words, Nessun magier dolor che recordarsi del tempo feliz nella miseria. Inferno, v. 121. There is no greater sorrow than to remember happy times when in misery. 65. As great a craft is to keep will as win, it needs as much skill to keep prosperity as to attain it. 66. To heap, together. See the reference to Boethius in Note 91 to the Knight's Tale. 67. The small beasts let he go beside, a charming touch, indicative of the noble and generous inspiration of his love. 68. Mew, the cage or chamber in which hawks were kept and carefully tended during the molting season. 69. Love of steel, love as true as steel. 70. Pandarus, as it repeatedly appears, was an unsuccessful lover. 71. Each for his virtue holden is full dear, both heroner, and falcon for revere, that is, each is esteemed for a special virtue or faculty, as the large gerfalcon for the chase of heron, the smaller goshawk for the chase of river fowl. 72. Zosis, an author of whom no record survives. 73. And upon new case leath new advice, new counsels must be adopted as new circumstances arise. 74. Hidden Mew, hidden in a place remote from the world, of which Pandarus thus betrays ignorance. 75. The modern phrase, sixes and sevens, means, in confusion, but here the idea of gaming perhaps suits the sense better, set the world upon a cast of the dice. 76. The controversy between those who maintained the doctrine of predestination and those who held that of free will raged with no less animation at Chaucer's day, and before it, than it has done in the subsequent five centuries. The Dominicans upholding the sterner creed, the Franciscans taking the other side. Chaucer has more briefly, and with the same care not to commit himself, referred to the discussion in the nun's priest's tale. 77. That have their top full high and smooth wyshore, that are eminent among the clergy, who wear the tonsure. 78. Athamant, Athamas, son of Aeolus. 
who, seized with madness, under the wrath of Juno for his neglect of his wife Nephili, slew his son Lurchus. 79. Samois, one of the rivers of the Troad, flowing into the Xanthus. 80. Troilus was the son of Priam and Hecuba. 81. The son of Tydeus, Diomedes, far oftener called Tydides, after his father Tydeus, king of Argos. 82. Ku the more than the creed, knew more than the mere elements, of the science of love. 83. Eriche, wrench away, unroot, French, aracher. The opposite of, in race, to root in, implant. 84. It will be remembered that, at the beginning of the first book, Cressida is introduced to us as a widow. 85. Diomede is called, sudden, for the unexpectedness of his assault on Cressida's heart, or, perhaps, for the abrupt abandonment of his indifference to love. 86. Pencil, a pennon or pendant, French, penoncel. It was the custom in chivalric times for a knight to wear, on days of tournament or in battle, some such token of his lady's favor, or badge of his service to her. 87. She has been told that Troilus is deceiving her. 88. The Roman calends were the first day of the month, when a change of weather was usually expected. 89. Maker, and making, words used in the Middle Ages to signify the composer and the composition of poetry, correspond exactly with the Greek poets and poema, from poio, I make. 90. My rather speech, my earlier, former subject. Rather, is the comparative of the old adjective, wrath, early. 91. Up to the hollowness of the seventh sphere, passing up through the hollowness or concavity of the spheres, which all revolve round each other and are all contained by God, see note 5 to the assembly of fowls, the soul of Troilus, looking downward. Beholds the converse or convex side of the spheres which it has traversed. 92. Sorted, allotted, from Latin, sores, lot, fortune. 93. Rascale, rabble, French, recale, a mob or multitude, the riffraff, so Spencer speaks of the rascal routs of inferior combatants. 94. John Gower, the poet, a contemporary and friend of Chaucer's, author, among other works, of the Confessio Amantes. See note 1 to the Man of Law's Tale. 95. Strode was an eminent scholar of Merton College, Oxford, and tutor to Chaucer's son Lewis. 96. Explicitly bear Troili et Cressidus, the end of the book of Troilus and Cressida. Chaucer's Dream. This pretty allegory, or rather conceit, containing one or two passages that for vividness and for delicacy yield to nothing in the whole range of Chaucer's poetry, had never been printed before the year 1597. When it was included in the edition of Spet. Before that date, indeed, a dream of Chaucer had been printed, but the poem so described was in reality, The Book of the Duchess, or The Death of Blanche, Duchess of Lancaster, which is not included in the present edition. Spet says that, this dream, devised by Chaucer, seemeth to be a covert report of the marriage of John of Gaunt, the king's son, with Blanche, the daughter of Henry, Duke of Lancaster. Who after long love, during the time whereof the poet feigneth them to be dead, were in the end, by consent of friends, happily married, figured by a bird bringing in his bill an herb, which restored them to life again. Here also is showed Chaucer's match with a certain gentlewoman, who, although she was a stranger, was, notwithstanding, so well liked and loved of the Lady Blanche and her lord, as Chaucer himself also was. That gladly they concluded a marriage between them. John of Gaunt, at the age of nineteen, and while yet Earl of Richmond, was married to the Lady Blanche at Reading in May 1359, Chaucer, then a prisoner in France, probably did not return to England till peace was concluded in the following year. So that his marriage to Philippa Rowett, the sister of the Duchess Blanche's favorite attendant Catherine Rowett, could not have taken place till some time after that of the Duke. In the poem, it is represented to have immediately followed. But no consequence need be attached to that statement. Enough that it followed at no great interval of time. And that the intimate relations which Chaucer had already begun to form with John of Gaunt, 
might well warrant him in writing this poem on the occasion of the Duke's marriage, and in weaving his own love fortunes with those of the principal figures. In the necessary abridgment of the poem for the present edition, the subsidiary branch of the allegory, relating to the poet's own love affair, has been so far as possible separated from the main branch. Which shadows forth the fortunes of John and Blanche. The poem, in full, contains, with an envoy arbitrarily appended, 2,233 lines, of which 510 are given here. Transcribers note, modern scholars believe that Chaucer was not the author of this poem. When Flora, the Queen of Pleasance, had wholly achieved the obeisance won the obedience of the fresh and the new season, thorough every region, and with her mantle whole covert wholly covered, what winter had made discovert, stripped. On a May night, the poet lay alone, thinking of his lady, and all her beauty. And, falling asleep, he dreamed that he was in an island. Where wall, and gate, was all of glass. And so was closed round about. That leaveless nun came in nor out, without permission. Uncouth and strange to behold. For every gate, of fine gold. A thousand fanes, I turning, veins, weathercocks. In tuned had, and birds singing contrived so as to emit. Diversely, on each fane a pair, a musical sound. With open mouth, against the air. Less than one greater than. And of a suit were all the toares, of the same plan. Subtly carven aft flores carved to represent. Of uncouth colors, during I, lasting forever. That never be none seen in May. With many a small turret high. But man alive I could not sigh, see. Nor creatures, save ladies play, disporting themselves. Which were such of their array. That, as me thought, of goodly head for comeliness. They passed all, and woman head. For to behold them dance and sing. It seemed like none earthly thing. And all were of the same age, save one, who was advanced in years, though no less gay in demeanor than the rest. While he stood admiring the richness and beauty of the place, and the fairness of the ladies, which had the notable gift of enduring unimpaired till death, the poet was accosted by the old lady, to whom he had to yield himself prisoner. Because the ordinance of the isle was, that no man should dwell there, and the lady's fear of breaking the law was enhanced by the temporary absence of their queen from the realm. Just at this moment the cry was raised that the queen came. All the ladies hastened to meet her, and soon the poet saw her approach, but in her company his mistress, wearing the same garb, and a seemly knight. All the ladies wondered greatly at this. And the queen explained. My sisters, how it hath befall, befallen. I trow ye know it one and all. That of long time here have I been. Within this I'll biding as queen. Living at ease, that never wight. More perfect joy have not might. And to you been of governance. Such as you found in whole pleasance, less than two greater than. In everything as ye know. After our custom and our law. Which how they first founded were. I trow ye what all the manner. And who the queen is of this isle. As I have been this lunge while. Each seven years must, of usage. Visit the heaven ly hermitage. Which on a rock so high stands. In a strange sea, out from all lands. That for to make the pilgrimage. Is called a perilous voyage. For if the wind be not good friend. The journey dureth to the end. Of him which that it undertakes. Of twenty thousand not one scapes. Upon which rock groweth a tree. That certain years bears apples three. Which three apples whoso may have. Is from all displeasance why save safe from all pain. That in the seven years may fall. This what you well, both one and all. For the first apple and the hext, highest less than three greater than. Which groweth unto you the next. Hath three virtues notable. And keepeth youth I durable. Beauty, and looks, ever in one, continually. And is the best of every one. 
the second apple, red and green. Only with looks of your eyne. You nourishes in great pleasance. Better than partridge or pheasants, pheasant. And feedeth every living white. Pleasantly, only with the sight. And the third apple of the three. Which groweth lowest on the tree. Whoso it beareth may not fail miss, fail to obtain. That to his pleasance may avail. That which. So your pleasure and beauty rich. Your during youth ever wilich, alike. Your truth, your cunning, and your wheel, knowledge. Hath flowered eye, and your good heel. Without sickness or displeasance. Or thing that to you was noyance. Offense, injury. So that you have as goddesses. Lived above all princesses. Now is befallen, as ye may see. To gather these said apples three. I have not failed, against the day. Thitherward to take the way. Weaning to speed as I had oft. Expecting to succeed. But when I came, I found aloft. My sister, which that hero stands. Having those apples in her hands. Advising them, and nothing said, regarding. Gazing on. But looked as she were well appaid, satisfied. And as I stood her to behold. Thinking how my joys were cold. Since I these apples have not might, might not have. Even with that so came this night. And in his arms, of me unware. Me took, and to his ship me bare. And said, though him I ne'er had seen. Yet had I long his lady been. Wherefore I shewed with him wend. And he would, to his life's end. My servant be, and gone to sing. As one that had won a rich thing. Then were my spirits from me gone. So suddenly every one. That in me appeared but death. For I felt neither life nor breath. Nor good nor harm none I knew. The sudden pain me was so new. That had not the hasty grace be had it not been for the. Of this lady, that from the tree prompt kindness. Of her gentleness so bled, hastened. Me to comfort him, I had died. And of her three apples she won. Into mine hand there put anon. Which brought again my mind and breath. And me recovered from the death. Wherefore to her so am I hold, beholden, obliged. That for her all things do I well d. For she was leech of all my smart, physician. And from great pain so quit my heart. Delivered. And as God what, right as ye hear. Me to comfort with friendly cheer. She did her prowess and her might. And truly eke so did this knight. In that he could. And often said. That of my woe he was ill paid, distressed, ill pleased. And cursed the ship that him there brought. The mast, the master that it wrought. And, as each thing must have an end. My sister here, our bother friend, less than four greater than. Gone with her words so womanly. This night entreat, and cunningly. For mine honor and hers also. And said that with her we should go. Both in her ship. Where she was brought. Which was so wonderfully wrought. So clean, so rich, and so arrayed. That we were both content and paid. Satisfied. And me to comfort and to please. And my heart for to put at ease. She took great pain in little while. And thus hath brought us to this isle. As ye may see. Wherefore each one. I pray you thank her one and one. As heartily as ye can devise. Or imagine in any wise. At once there then men might see an. A world of ladies fall on neem. Before my lady. Thanking her, and placing themselves at her commandment. Then the queen sent the aged lady to the knight, to learn of him why he had done her all this woe. And when the messenger had discharged her mission, telling the knight that in the general opinion he had done amiss, he fell down suddenly as if dead for sorrow and repentance. Only with great difficulty, by the queen herself, was he restored to consciousness and comfort. 
but though she spoke kind and hope-inspiring words, her heart was not in her speech. For her intent was, to his barge. Him for to bring against the eve. With certain ladies, and take leave. And pray him, of his gentleness. To suffer her thenceforth in peace, let her dwell. As other princes had before. And from thenceforth, for evermore. She would him worship in all wise. That gentleness might devise. And pain her wholly to fulfill, make her utmost efforts. In honor, his pleasure and will. And during thus this night's woe. Present the queen and other M.O., their being, present. My lady and many another wight. Ten thousand ships at a sight. I saw come o'er the wavy flood. With sail and oar. That, as I stood. Them to behold, I gone marvail. From whom might come so many a sail. For, since the time that I was born. Such a navy there before. Had I not seen, nor so arrayed. That for the sight my hearout played. I to and fro within my breast. For joy long was ere it would rest. For there were sails full of flores. Embroidered with flowers. After, castles with huge toares, less than five greater than. Seeming full of arms bright. That wandrouse lusty was the sight, pleasant. With large tops, and masts long. Richly depaint and reared among. Raised among them. At certain times gone repair. Small birds down from the air. And on the ship's bounds about bulwarks. Sat and sang, with voice full out. Ballads and lays right joyously. As they could in their harmony. The ladies were alarmed and sorrow stricken at sight of the ships, thinking that the knight's companions were on board, and they went towards the walls of the isle, to shut the gates. But it was Cupid who came. And he had already landed, and marched straight to the place where the knight lay. Then he chid the queen for her unkindness to his servant, shot an arrow into her heart. And passed through the crowd, until he found the poet's lady, whom he saluted and complimented, urging her to have pity on him that loved her. While the poet, standing apart, was revolving all this in his mind, and resolving truly to serve his lady, he saw the queen advance to Cupid, with a petition in which she besought forgiveness of past offences. And promised continual and zealous service till her death. Cupid smiled, and said that he would be king within that island, his new conquest, then, after long conference with the queen, he called a council for the morrow, of all who chose to wear his colours. In the morning, such was the press of ladies, that scarcely could standing room be found in all the plain. Cupid presided. And one of his counsellors addressed the mighty crowd, promising that ere his departure his lord should bring to an agreement all the parties there present. Then Cupid gave to the knight and the dreamer each his lady. Promised his favour to all the others in that place who would truly and busily serve in love, and at evening took his departure. Next morning, having declined the proffered sovereignty of the island, the poet's mistress also embarked, leaving him behind. But he dashed through the waves, was drawn on board her ship from peril of death, and graciously received into his lady's lasting favour. Here the poet awakes, finding his cheeks and body all wet with tears. And, removing into another chamber, to rest more in peace, he falls asleep anew, and continues the dream. Again he is within the island, where the knight and all the ladies are assembled on a green, and it is resolved by the assembly, not only that the knight shall be their king, but that every lady there shall be wedded also. It is determined that the knight shall depart that very day, and return, within ten days, with such a host of benedicts, that none in the isle need lack husbands. The knight. Anon into a little barge. Brought was, laid against an eve. Whereof all he took his leave. Which barge was, as a man thought. Aft his pleasure to him brought. According to. The queen herself accustomed I. In the same barge to play. Take her sport. It needed neither mast nor rather rudder. I have not heard of such another. Nor master for the governance. Steering. It sailed by thought and pleasance. 
without labor, east and west. All was one, calm or tempest. Less than six greater than. And I went with, at his request. And was the first prayed to the feast. The bridal feast. When he came unto his country. And passed had the wavy sea. In a haven deep and large. He left his rich and noble barge. And to the court, shortly to tell. He went, where he was wont to dwell. And was gladly received as king by the estates of the land. For during his absence his father, old, and wise, and hoar, had died, commending to their fidelity his absent son. The prince related to the estates his journey, and his success in finding the princess in quest of whom he had gone seven years before, and said that he must have sixty thousand guests at his marriage feast. The lords gladly guaranteed the number within the set time, but afterwards they found that fifteen days must be spent in the necessary preparations. Between shame and sorrow, the prince, thus compelled to break his faith, took to his bed, and, in wailing in self-reproach, endured the days fifteen. Till that the lords, on an evening, evening, him came and told they ready were, and showed in few words there, how and what wise they had purveyed provided suitably, for his estate, and to him said, to his rank, that twenty thousand knights of name, and forty thousand without blame. Allah come of noble lineage line. Lineage. Together in a company. Were lodged on a river's side. Him and his pleasure their tea abide. The prince then for joy uprose. And, where they lodged were, he goes. Without more, that same night. And there his supper made to dight, had prepared. And with them bowed till it was day abode, waited, and forthwith to take his journey, leaving the strait, holding the large, till he came to his noble barge, and when the prince, this lusty knight, with his people in arms bright, was come where he thought to pass, crossed to the isle, and knew well none abiding was, behind, but all were there present, forthwith anon all his intent, he told them there, and made his cries proclamation. Thorough his host that day twice. Commanding every living wight. There being present in his sight. To be the morrow on the rivage, shore. There he begin with his voyage. The morrow come, the cry was kept proclamation was obeyed. But few were there that night that slept. But trust and pervade for the morrow, packed up and provided. For fault of ships was all their sorrow. Lack, shortage. For, save the barge, and other two. Of ships there I saw no mo. Thus in their doubts as they stood. Waxing the sea, coming the flood. Was cried, to ship go every wight. Then was but high that high him might, whoever could hasten, did. And to the barge, me thought, each one. They went, without was left not one. Horse, nor mail, truss, nor baggage, trunk, wallet. Salad, spear, guard brace, nor page. Helmetless than seven greater than arm shieldless than eight greater than. But was lodged in room enough. At which shipping me thought I lock, laughed. And gone to marvel in my thought. However such a ship was wrought. Constructed. For what people that can increase, however the numbers increased. Nor ne'er so thick might be the priests, press, crowd. But Allah had room at will. There was not one was lodged ill. For, as I trow, myself the last. Was one, and lodged by the mast. And where I looked I saw such room. As all were lodged in a town. Forth went the ship, said was the creed. Less than nine greater than. And on their knees, for their good speed, to pray for success. Down kneeled every white a while. And prayed fast that to the isle. They might come in safety. The prince and all the company. With worship and without blame. Or disclander of his name, reproach, slander. Of the promise he should return. Within the time he did sojourn. 
in his land biding his host. Waiting for. This was their prayer least and most. To keep the day it might not be an. That he appointed with the queen. Wherefore the prince slept neither day nor night, till he and his people landed on the glasswalled isle, weaning to be in heaven that night. But ere they had gone a little way, they met a lady all in black, with piteous countenance, who reproached the prince for his untruth, and informed him that, unable to bear the reproach to their name. Caused by the lightness of their trust in strangers, the queen and all the ladies of the isle had vowed neither to eat, nor drink, nor sleep, nor speak, nor cease weeping till all were dead. The queen had died the first, and half of the other ladies had already under the earth tain lodging new. The woeful recorder of all these woes invites the prince to behold the queen's hearse. Come within, come see her hearse. Where ye shall see the piteous sight. That ever yet was shown to night. For ye shall see ladies stand. Each with a greet rod in hand. Clad in black, with visage white. Ready each other for to smite. If any be that will not weep. Or who makes countenance to sleep. They be so beat, that all so blue. They be as cloth that dewide is new. Scarcely has the lady ceased to speak, when the prince plucks forth a dagger, plunges it into his heart, and, drawing but one breath, expires. For wish caused the lusty host. Which, stood, in battle on the coast. At once for sorrow such a cry. Gone rear, thorough the company, throughout. That to the heaven heard was the sown. And under th earth as far adown. And wild beasts for the fear. So suddenly afraid were, afraid. That for the doubt, while they might dure, have a chance of safety. They ran as of their lives unsure. From the woods into the plain. And from valleys the high mountain. They sought, and ran as beasts blind. That clean forgotten had their kind. Nature. The lords of the laggard host ask the woebegone lady what should be done. She answers that nothing can now avail, but that for remembrance they should build in their land, open to public view, in some notable old city, a chapel engraved with some memorial of the queen. And straightway, with a sigh, she also passed her breath. Then said the lords of the host. And so concluded least and most. That they would eye in houses of thack thatch. Their lives lead, less than ten greater than and where but black. And forsake all their pleasances. And turn all joy to penances. And bear the dead prince to the barge. And name them should have the charge, those who should. And to the hearse where lay the queen. The remnant went, and down on Neen. Holding their hands on high, gone cry. Mercy. Mercy, ever each thry. Each one thrice. And curse the time that ever sloth. Should have such masterdom of troth. And to the barge, a lunge mile. They bear her forth, and, in a while. All the ladies, one and one. By companies were brought each one. And passed the sea, and took the land. And in new hearses, on a sand. Put and brought were all anon. Unto a city clossed with stone. Where it had been used I. The kings of the land to lay. After they reigned in honours. And writ was which were conquerors. In an abbey of nuns black. Which accustomed were to wake. And of usage rise each a night. To pray for every living wight. And so befell, as is the guise. Ordained and said was the service. Of the prince and eke of the queen. So devoutly as might be in. And, after that, about the hearses. Many orisons and verses. Without note less than eleven greater than full softly music. Said were, and that full heartily. That all the night, till it was day. The people in the church gone pray. Unto the Holy Trinity. Of those souls to have pity. And when the night passed and run. Was, and the new day begun. The young morrow with ray is red. Which from the sun all o'er gone spread. 
a tempered clear was and fair, clement, calm. And made a time of wholesome air. Befell a wondrous case and strange chance, event. Among the people, and gone change. Soon the word, and every woe. Unto a joy, and some to two. A bird, all feathered blue and green. With bright rays like gold between. As small thread over every joint. All full of color strange and quaint, quaint. Uncouth and wonderful to sight, unfamiliar. Upon the queen's hearse gone light. And sung full low and soft ely. Three sanjas in their harmony. Unleaded of every white. Unhindered by. Till at the last an aged knight. Which seemed a man in Greek thought. Like as he set all thing at naught. With visage and eyes all forwept, steeped in tears. And pale, as a man long unslept. By the hearses as he stood. With hasty handling of his hood. Unto a prince that by him passed. Made the bird somewhat aghast. Frightened. Wherefore he rose and left his song. And departed from us among. And spread his winges for to pass. By the place where he entered was. And in his haste, shortly to tell. Him hurt, that backward down he fell. From a window richly paint. With lives of many a diver saint. And beat his winges and bled fast. And of the hurt thus died and passed. And lay there well an hour and more. Till, at the last, of birds a score. Came and assembled at the place. Where the window broken was. And made such lamentation, lamentation. That pity was to hear the sown. And the warbles of their throats. And the complaint of their notes. Which from joy clean was reversed. And of them one the glass soon pierced. And in his beak, of colors nine. An herb he brought, flowerless, all green. Full of small leaves, and plain, smooth. Swart, and long, with many a vein. Black. And where his fellow lay thus dead. This herb he down laid by his head. And dressed it full soft ely, arranged. And hung his head, and stood thereby. Which herb, in less than half an hour. Gone over all knit, and after flow are bud. Full out, and waxed ripe the seed. And, right as one another feed. Wood, in his beak he took the grain. And in his fellow's beak certain. It put, and thus within the third i.e. third hour after it. Up stewed and pruned him the bird, had died. Which dead had been in all our sight. And both together forth their flight. Took, singing, from us, and their leave. Was none disturb them would nor grieve. And, when they parted were and gone. Th. Abbas the seed soon each one. Gathered had, and in her hand. The herb she took, well Avis and considering less than twelve greater than. The leaf, the seed, the stalk, the floor. And said it had a good savor. And was no common herb to find. And well approved of uncouth kind, strange nature. And more than other virtuous. Whoso might it have for to use. In his need, flower, leaf, or grain. Of his heel might be certain. She laid it down upon the hearse. Where lay the queen, and gone rehearse. Each one to other what they had seen. And, tailing thus, the seed waxed green, as they gossiped. And on the dry hearse gone to spring. Which me thought was a wondrous thing. And, after that, floor and new seed. Of which the people all took heed. And said it was some great miracle. Or medicine fine more than treacle. Less than twelve greater than. And were well done there to assay. If it might ease, in any way. The corpses, which with torchlight. They waked had there all that night. Soon did the lords their consent. And all the people their too content. With easy words and little fare. Adieu, trouble. And made the queen's visage bare. Which showed was to all about. 
wherefore in swoon fell all the rout, company, crowd. And were so sorry, most and least. That long of weeping they not see ye aced. For of their Lord the remembrance. Unto them was such displeasance. Cause of grief. That for to live they called pain. So were they very true and plain. And after this the good abbess. Of the grains gone choose and dress prepare. Three, with her fingers clean and smale, small. And in the queen's mouth, by tail. One after other, full easily. She put, and eke full cunningly. Skillfully. Which showed some such virtue. That proved was the medicine true. For with a smiling countenance. The queen uprose, and of usance custom. As she was wont, to every white. She made good cheer. For wish sight showed a gracious. The people, kneeling on the stones, countenance. Thought they in heaven were, soul and bones. And to the prince, where that he lay. They went to make the same assay. Trial, experiment. And when the queen had understood. And how the medicine was good. She prayed that she might have the grains. To relieve him from the pains. Which she and he had both endured. And to him went, and so him curd. That, within a little space. Lusty and fresh alive he was. And in good heel, and whole of speech. And laughed, and said, Gramercy, leech. Great thanks. For which the joy throughout the town my physician. So great was, that the bells sown. Afraid the people a journey to the distance of. About the city every way. A day's journey. And came and asked the cause, and why. They run gen were so stately. Proudly, solemnly. And after that the queen, th abbess. Made diligence, less than fourteen greater than ere they would cease. Such, that of ladies soon a rout company, crowd. Suing the queen was all about. Following. And, called by name each one and told, numbered. Was none forgotten, young nor old. There might men see joys new. When the medicine, fine and true. Thus restored had every white. So well the queen as the knight. Unto perfect joy and heal. That floating they were in such will swimming in such. As folk that wooden in no wise happiness. Desire more perfect paradise. On the morrow a general assembly was convoked, and it was resolved that the wedding feast should be celebrated within the island. Messengers were sent to strange realms, to invite kings, queens, duchesses, and princesses. An especial embassy was dispatched, in the magic barge, to seek the poet's mistress, who was brought back after fourteen days, to the great joy of the queen. Next day took place the wedding of the prince and all the knights to the queen and all the ladies. And a three months feast followed, on a large plain under a wood, in a champagne, betwixt a river and a well, where never had abbey nor cell been, nor church, house, nor village, in time of any man's age. On the day after the general wedding, all entreated the poet's lady to consent to crown his love with marriage, she yielded, the bridal was splendidly celebrated. And to the sound of marvellous music the poet awoke, to find neither lady nor creature, but only old portraitures on the tapestry, of horsemen, hawks, and hounds, and hurt deer full of wounds. Great was his grief that he had lost all the bliss of his dream, and he concludes by praying his lady so to accept his love service, that the dream may turn to reality. Or else, without more I pray, that this night, ere it be day, I may unto my dream return, and sleeping so forth I sojourn, abut the isle of pleasance, under my lady's obeisance, subject to my lady, in her service, and in such wise, as it may please her to devise, and grace wants to be accept, like as I dreamed when I slept, endure a thousand year and ten, in her good will, amen, amen. Notes to Chaucer's Dream 1. The birds on the weathervanes were set up facing the wind, so that it entered their open mouths, 
and by some mechanism produced the musical sound. 2. And to you been of governance such as you found in whole pleasance, that is, and have governed you in a manner which you have found wholly pleasant. 3. Hext, highest, from, high, as, next, from, nigh. Compare the sounds of the German, hookst, highest, and nächst, next. 4. Your brother friend, is the common reading, but the phrase has no apparent applicability. And perhaps the better reading is, our bother friend, that is, the lady who has proved herself a friend both to me and to you. In the same way, reason, in Troilus' soliloquy on the impending loss of his mistress, is made, addressing Troilus and Cressida, to speaks of, your bother, or, boda, love. 5. The ships had high embattled poops and forecastles, as in medieval ships of war. 6. Compare Spencer's account of Phaedria's bark, in, the Fairy Queen, Canto 6. Book 2. And, Mutatis Mutandis. Chaucer's description of the wondrous horse, in the squire's tale. 7. Salad, a small helmet, French, salade. 8. Guard brace, French, guard bras, an arm shield. Probably resembling the gay bracer, which the yeoman, in the prologue to the Canterbury Tales, wears on his arm. 9. Confession and prayer were the usual preliminaries of any enterprise in those superstitious days. And in these days of enlightenment the fashion yet lingers among the most superstitious class, the fisherfolk. 10. The knights resolved that they would quit their castles and houses of stone for humble huts. 11. The knight and lady were buried without music, although the office for the dead was generally sung. 12. Avis Anne, considering, present participle from, avis, or, advise. 13. Treacle, corrupted from Latin, therisca, an antidote. The word is used for medicine in general. 14. The abbess made diligence, i.e., to administer the grain to the dead ladies. The prologue to the legend of good women. Some difference of opinion exists as to the date at which Chaucer wrote The Legend of Good Women. Those who would fix that date at a period not long before the poet's death, who would place the poem, indeed, among his closing labors, support their opinion by the fact that the prologue recites most of Chaucer's principal works and glances. Besides, add a long array of other productions, too many to be fully catalogued. But, on the other hand, it is objected that the legend makes no mention of the Canterbury Tales as such. While two of those tales, the Knights and the Second Nuns, are enumerated by the titles which they bore as separate compositions, before they were incorporated in the great collection, The Love of Palamon and Arcite. And The Life of Saint Cecile, see Note 1 to the Second Nuns' Tale. Turwitt seems perfectly justified in placing the composition of the poem immediately before that of Chaucer's magnum opus, and after the marriage of Richard II to his first queen, and of Bohemia. That event took place in 1382. And since it is to end that the poet refers when he makes Alcestis bid him give his poem to the queen, at Eltham or at Sheen, the legend could not have been written earlier. The old editions tell us that several ladies in the court took offense at Chaucer's large speeches against the untruth of women. Therefore the queen enjoined him to compile this book in the commendation of sundry maidens and wives, who showed themselves faithful to faithless men. This seems to have been written after the flower and the leaf. Evidently it was, for distinct references to that poem are to be found in the prologue, but more interesting is the indication which it furnishes, that Troilus and Cressida was the work, not of the poet's youth, but of his maturer age. We could hardly expect the Queen, whether of love or of England, to demand seriously from Chaucer a retractation of sentiments which he had expressed a full generation before, and for which he had made atonement by the splendid praises of true love sung in The Court of Love, The Cuckoo and the Nightingale, and other poems of youth and middle life. But, Troilus and Cressida, is coupled with, The Romance of the Rose, as one of the poems which had given offense to the servants and the god of love. Therefore we may suppose it to have more prominently engaged courtly notice at a later period of the poet's life, than even its undoubted popularity could explain. At whatever date, or in whatever circumstances, undertaken, 
The Legend of Good Women, is a fragment. There are several signs that it was designed to contain the stories of twenty-five ladies, although the number of the good women is in the poem itself set down at nineteen, but nine legends only were actually composed, or have come down to us. They are, those of Cleopatra Queen of Egypt, 126 lines, this be of Babylon, 218, Dido Queen of Carthage, 442, Hypsipyle in Medea, 312, Lucrece of Rome, 206, Ariadne of Athens, 340, Phiomela, 167, Phyllis, 168, and Hypermnestra, 162. Prefixed to these stories, which are translated or imitated from Ovid, is a prologue containing 579 lines, the only part of the legend given in the present edition. It is by far the most original, the strongest, and most pleasing part of the poem, the description of spring, and of his enjoyment of that season, are in Chaucer's best manner. And the political philosophy by which Alcestis mitigates the wrath of Cupid, adds another to the abounding proofs that, for his knowledge of the world. Chaucer fairly merits the epithet of many-sided, which Shakespeare has won by his knowledge of man. A thousand times I have hard tell. That there is joy in heaven, and pain in hell. And I accord it well that it is so. Grant, agree. But, knaveless, yet what I well also, know. That there is none dwelling in this country. That either hath in heaven or hell why be, been. Nor may of it no other ways written know. But as he hath heard said, or found it written. For by a say there may no man it prove. Practical trial. Prove, test. But God forbid but that men should believe. Well more thing than men have seen with eye. Men shall not wean in everything a lie. But if himself it seeth, or else do th, unless. For, God what, thing is nevertheless sooth, true. Though every wight may it not why see. Bernard, the monkey, saw not all, pardi. Less than one greater than. Then must we the books that we find. Through which that old things be in mind. And to the doctrine of these old wise. Give credence, in every skillful wise, reasonable. That tell then of these old approved stories. Of holiness. Of regs, of victories, reigns, kingdoms. Of love, of hate, and other sundry things. Of which I may not make rehearsings. And if that old books were away. Why lorn were of all remembrance the key. Well ought we, then, to honor and believe. These books, where we have none other prove. Proof. And as for me, though that I know but light, little. On books for to read I me delight. And to them give I faith and good credence. And in my heart have them in reverence. So heartily. That there is game none less than too greater than no amusement. That from my books mocketh me to go in. But it be seldom on the holy day. Save, certainly, when that the month of May. Is coming, and I hear the fowls sing. And that the flowers ginnin for to spring. Farewell my book and my devotion. Now have I then such a condition. That, above all the flowers in the mead. Then love I most these flowers white and red. Such that men kaye day's eyes in our town. To them have I so great affection. As I said erst, when comin is the May. That in my bed there dawneth me no day. That I n am up, and walking in the mead, am not. To see this flow are against the sun spread. When it upriseth early by the morrow. That blissful sight softeneth all my sorrow. So glad am I, when that I have presence. Of it, to do it all reverence. As she that is of all flowers flow are. Fulfilled of all virtue and honor. And ever alike fair, and fresh of hue. As well in winter, as in summer new. This love I ever, and shall until I die. All swear I not, of this I will not lie, although. There loved no white hotter in his life. And when that it is eve, I run blithe, quickly, eagerly. As soon as ever the sun begins to west, decline westward. To see this flower, 
how it will go to rest. For fear of night, so hadeth she darkness. Her cheer is plainly spread in the brightness countenance. Of the sun, for there it will unclose. Alas! That I had English, rhyme or prose. Sufficient this flow are to praise aright. But help me, ye that have cunning or might. Skill or power. Ye lovers, that can make of sentiment. In this case ought ye to be diligent. To further me somewhat in my labor. Whether ye be with the leaf or the floor. Less than three greater than. For well I wot, that ye have here before. Of making ropen, and led away the corn, less than four greater than reaped. And I come after, gleaning here and there. And am full glad if I may find an ear. Of any goodly word that you have left. And though it hap me to rehearse an eft again. What ye have in your fresh sanja said. Forbear me, and be not evil apaid, displeased. Since that ye see I do it in th honor. Of love. And eke in service of the floor. Whom that I serve as I have wit or might. Less than five greater than. She is the clearness, and the very light, true. That in this dark world me wins and leads, turns, guides. The heart within my sorrowful breast you dreads. And love so sore, that ye be, verily. The mistress of my wit, and nothing I. My word, my works, are knit so in your bond. That, as a harp obeyeth to the hand. That makes it sound after his fingering. Right so may ye out of my here root bring. Such voice, right as you list, to laugh or plain. Complain, mourn. Be ye my guide, and lady sovereign. As to mine earthly God, to you I call. Both in this work, and in my sorrows all. But wherefore that I spake to give credence. To old stories, and do them reverence. And that men must more things believe. Then they may see it I, or else prove, prove. That shall I say, when that I see my time. I may not all at one speak in rhyme. My busy ghost, that thirsteth always new spirit. To see this flow are so young, so fresh of hue. Constrained me with so greedy desire. That in my heart I feel yet the fire. That made me to rise ere it were day. And this was now the first morrow of May. With dreadful heart, and glad devotion. For to be at the resurrection. Of this flower, when that it should unclose. Against the sun, that rose as red as rose. That in the breast was of the beast that day the sign of the bull. That Agenor's daughter led away. Less than six greater than. And down on knees anon right I me set. And as I could this fresh floor I gret, greeted. Kneeling alway, till it unclosed was. Upon the small, soft, sweet grass. That was with flowers sweet embroidered all. Of such sweetness and such odor o'er all, everywhere. That, for to speak of gum, or herb, or tree. Comparison may none why make be. For it surmounteth plainly all odors. And for rich beauty the most gay of flores. Forgotten had the earth his poor estate. Of winter, that him naked made and mate, dejected, lifeless. And with his sword of cold so sore grieved. Now hath th a temper son all that relieved temperate furnished. That naked was, and clad it new again. Anew with leaves. The small fowls, of the season fain, glad. That of the panther and the net be scapped, draw net. Upon the fowler, that them made a wapt terrified, confounded. In winter, and destroyed had their brood. In his despite them thought it did them good. To sing of him, and in their song despise. The fool a churl, that, for his covetise, greed. Had them betrayed with his sophistry deceptions. This was their song, the fowler we defy. And all his craft and some soon be clear. Lays of love, that joy it was to hear. In worshipping and praising of their make. Honouring mate. And for the blissful new summer's sake. Upon the branches full of blossoms soft. 
In their delight they turned them full oft. And Suanga, blessed be Saint Valentine. Less than seven greater than. For on his day I chose you to be mine. Without repenting, my Hirut sweet. And therewithal their heels began to meet. Yielding honor, and humble obeisances. To love, and did their other observances. That longen unto love and to nature. Construe that as you list, I do no cure. Care nothing. And those that had done unkindness, committed offense. As doth the tidife, less than eight greater than for nefangleness, against natural laws. Besought mercy for their trespassing. And humbly sanged their repenting. And swore upon the blossoms to be true. So that their mates would upon them rue, take pity. And at the last made their accord. Reconciliation. All found they danger for a time a lord, although disdain. Yet pity, through her strong gentle might. Forgave, and made mercy pass aright. Through innocence, and ruled courtesy. But I call not innocence folly. Nor false pity, for virtue is the mean. As ethic less than nine greater than Seth, in such manner I mean. And thus these fowls, void of all malice. Accorded unto love, and left vice. Of hate, and sanjen all of one accord. Welcome, summer, our governor and lord. And Zephyrus and Flora gently. Gave to the flowers, soft and tenderly. Their sweet breath, and made them for to spread. As God and goddess of the flowery mead. In which me thought I might, day by day. Dwell in alway, the jolly month of May. Without sleep, without meat or drink. Adown full softly I began to sink. And, leaning on mine elbow and my side. The lunge day I shoped to abide, resolved, prepared. For nothing else, and I shall not lie. But for to look upon the daisy. That men by reason well it kaye may. The day's eye, or else the eye of day. The empress and the flow are of flowers all. I pray to God that fair may she fall. And all that love flowers, for her sake. But, nathless, we not that I make do not fancy that I. In praising of the flow are against the leaf, write this poem. No more than of the corn against the sheaf. For as to me is lever none nor lother. I in am withholden yet with neither an other dot less than ten greater than. Nor I an ot who serves leaf, nor who the flow are, nor do I know. Well brook they their service or labor. May they profit by. For this thing is all of another ton, less than eleven greater than. Of old story, ere such thing was begun. When that the sun out of the south gone west. And that this flow are gone close, and go to rest. For darkness of the night, the which she dread. Dreaded. Home to my house full swiftly I me sped. To go to rest, and early for to rise. To see this flower spread, as I devise. Describe. And in a little arbor that I have. That benched was of turf's fresh y grave, less than twelve greater than cut out. I bade men shoot me my couche make. For dainty of the new summer's sake, pleasure. I bade them strow flowers on my bed. When I was laid, and had mine iron hid. I fell asleep, within an hour or two. Me meta how I lay in the meadow though, dreamed then. To see this flower that I love so and dread. And from afar came walking in the mead. The god of love, and in his hand a queen. And she was clad in royal habit green. A fret of gold she had next her hair, band. And upon that a white coron she bare. With floron small, and, as I shall not lie, florets less than thirteen greater than. For all the world right as a daisy. White crowned is, with white leaves light. Small. So were the florons of her crown white. Four of one pearl, fine, orinchal. Her white crown was why make all. For which the white crown above the green. Made her like a daisy for to see en, look upon. Considered eke her fret of gold above. 
white clothed was this mighty god of love. In silk embroidered, full of green greaves, boughs. In which there was a fret of red rose leaves. The freshest since the world was first begun. His gilt hair was white crowned with a sun. Instead of gold, for heaviness and weight, to avoid. There with me thought his face shone so bright. That well unneaths might I him behold. And in his hand me thought I saw him hold. Two fiery darts, as the gleeds red, glowing coals. An angel like his winges saw I spread. And all be that men say that blind is he, although. All gave me thought that he might well see. At all events. For sternly upon me he gone behold. So that his looking did my hear root cold. Made my heart. And by the hand he held this noble queen, grow cold. Crowned with white and clothed all in green. So womanly, so benign, and so meek. That in this world, though that men would seek. Half of her beauty shewed they not find. In creature that formed is by kind, nature. And therefore may I say, as think me. This song in praising of this lady free. Hide, Absalom, thy guilt tresses clear. Golden. Esther, lay thou thy meekness all adown. Hide, Jonathan, all thy friendly manner. Penelope, and Marcia Catown, less than fourteen greater than. Make of your wifehood no comparison. Hide ye your beauties, I should less than fifteen greater than in Helene. My lady comes, that all this may disdain. Outdo, obscure. Thy fair body let it not appear. Levine, less than sixteen greater than and thou, Lucrece of Rome town. And Polyxene, less than seventeen greater than that bought love so dear. And Cleopatra, with all thy passion. Hide ye your truth of love, and your renown. And thou, Thisbe, that hadst of love such pain. My lady comes, that all this may disdain. Hero, Dido, Laodamia, why fear, together. And Phyllis, hanging for Demophon. And Canace, espied by thy cheer. Hypsipyle, betrayed by Jasoun. Make of your true then neither boast nor sown. Nor Hypermnestra nor Ariadne, ye twain. My lady comes, that all this may disdain. This ballad may full well Weisungen be. As I have said erst, by my lady free. For, certainly, all these may not suffice. To pair with my lady in no wise. Surpass in beauty. For, as the sun will the fire disdain, or honor. So passeth all my lady sovereign. That is so good, so fair, so debonair. I pray to God that ever fall her fair. For en had comfort been of her presence, had I not the. I had been dead, without any defense, comfort of. For dread of love's wards, and his cheer. As, when time is, hereafter ye shall hear. Behind this God of love, upon the green. I saw coming of ladies nineteen. In royal habit, a full easy pace. And after them of women such a trace, train. That, since that God Adam had made of earth. The third part of mankind, or the firth, fourth. No weaned I not by possibility, I never fancied. Had ever in this wide world why be. Been. And true of love these women were each one. Now whether was that a wonder thing, or non, not. That, right anon as that they gone espy. This floor, which that I call the daisy. Full suddenly they stenton all at once, stopped. And kneeled down, as it were for the nonce. And sange with one voice, heal and honor. To truth of womanhead, and to this floor. That bears our all our prize in figuring. That in its figure bears. Her white crown bears the witnessing, the prize from us all. And with that word, a compass environ all around in a ring. They set them full softly adown. First sat the god of love, and since his queen, afterwards. With the white coron, clad in green. And sit hen all the remnant by and by, then. As they were of estate, 
full courteously. And not a word was spoken in the place. The mountains have a furlong way of space. Extent less than eighteen greater than. I, kneeling by this floor, in good intent. Abode, to know what this people meant. As still as any stone, till, at the last. The God of love on me his iron cast. And said, Who kneeleth there? And I answered. Unto his asking, when that I had heard. And said, It am I, and came to him near. And salute him. Quoth he, What dost thou here, saluted? So nigh mine own floor, so boldly. It were better worthy, truly. A worm to nigh near my floor than thou, approach, draw nigh. And why, sir, quoth I, and it liketh you. For thou, quoth he, art thereto nothing able. It is my relic, thine and delectable, emblem less than nineteen greater than worthy. And thou my foe, and all my folk warriest, molestest, censurest. And of mine old servants thou missayest. And hind rest them. With thy translation. And lettest folk from their devotion preventest. To serve me, and holdest it folly. To serve love. Thou mayst it not deny. For in plain text, without need of gloss, comment, gloss. Thursday hast translated the romance of the rose. That is a heresy against my law. And mocketh wise folk from me withdraw. And of Cresside thou hast said as thee list. That mocketh men to women less to trust. That be as true as e'er was any steel. Of thine answer advise thee right wheel. Consider right well. For though that thou rennied hast my lay, abjured my law. As other wretches have done many a day, or religion. By Saint Venus, that my mother is. If that thou live, thou shalt repent this. So cruelly. That it shall well be seen. Then spake this lady, clothed all in green. And said, God, right of your courtesy. Ye might hearken if he can reply. Against all this, that ye have to him meaved. Advanced against him. A God should not be thus aggrieved. But of his deity he shall be stable. And they're too gracious and merciable. Merciful. And if ye an a God, that knoweth all, were not. Then might it be, as I you tell shall. This man to you may falsely be accused. Whereas by right him ought to be excused. For in your court is many a lozenger, deceiver less than twenty greater than. And many a quaint totaler accuser, strange prating accuser less than twenty-one greater than. That tabar in your ears many a sown, drum. Right after their imagination. To have your dalliance, and for envy. Pleasant conversation. These be the causes, and I shall not lie, company. Envy is lavender of the court alway, laundress. For she departeth neither night nor day less than twenty-two greater than. Out of the house of Caesar, thus saith Dant. Whoso that go th all gate she shall not want. At all events. And eke, peranter, for this man is nice, peradventure foolish. He might do it guessing no malice, thinking. For he useth things for to make. Compose poetry. Him recketh not of what matter he take, cares nothing for. Or he was bidden make thilk tway compose those two. Of some person, and durst it not with say, by refuse, deny. Or him repenteth utterly of this. He hath not done so grievously amiss. To translate what old clerks write. As though that he of malice would endite, write down. Despite of love, and had himself it wrought. Contempt for. This should a righteous lord have in his thought. And not be like tyrants of Lombardy. That have no regard but a tyranny. For he that king or lord is natural. Him ought not be tyrant or cruel less than twenty-three greater than. As is a farmer, less than twenty-four greater than to do the harm he can. He must think, it is his liegeman. And is his treasure, and his golden coffer. This is the sentence of the philosopher, opinion, sentiment. 
a king to keep his lieges in justice. Without doubt that is his office. All will he keep his lords in their degree, although. As it is right and skillful that they be, reasonable. Enhanced and honored, and most dear. For they be half in this world here, demigods. Yet must he do both right to poor and rich. All be that their estate be not wilich. Alike. And have of poor folk compassion. For lo. The gentle kind of the lion. For when a fly offendeth him, or biteth. He with his tail away the fly smitteth. All easily. For of his gentary nobleness. Him deigneth not to wreak him on a fly. As doth a cur, or else another beast. In noble courage ought to be a rest, in a noble nature ought. And weigh in everything by equity, to be self-restraint. And ever have regard to his degree. For, sir, it is no mastery for a lord. To damn a man, without answer of word. Condemn. And for a lord, that is full foul to use. Most infamous practice. And it be so he may him not excuse, the offender. But asketh mercy with a dreadful heart, fearing, timid. And proffereth him, right in his bare shirt. To be right at your own judgment. Then ought a God. By short advisement, deliberation. Consider his own honor, and his trespass. For since no power of death lies in this case. You ought to be the lighter merciable. Let your ire, and be somewhat tractable. Restrain. This man hath served you of his cunning, ability, skill. And furthered well your law in his making. Composing poetry. Albeit that he cannot well endite. Yet hath he made lewd folk delight ignorant. To serve you, in praising of your name. He made the book that hight the house of fame. And eke the death of Blanche the Duchess. And the parliament of fowls, as I guess. And all the love of Palamon and Arsite, less than twenty-five greater than. Of Thebes, though the story is known light. Little. And many a hymn for your holy days. That height ballads, roundels, virales. And, for to speak of other holiness. He hath in prose translated beasts, less than twenty-six greater than. And made the life also of Saint Cecile. He made also, Gone is a great while. Origens upon the Magdalene. Less than twenty-seven greater than. Him ought now to have the less pain, penalty. He hath made many a lay, and many a thing. Now as ye be a god, and eke a king. I your Alcestis, less than twenty-eight greater than Wylam queen of Thrace. I ask you this man, right of your grace. That ye him never hurt in all his life. And he shall swear to you, and that blithe, quickly. He shall no more a Gwilton in this wise, offend. But shall make an, as ye will him devise. Of women true in loving all their life. Whereso ye will, of maiden or of wife. And further you as much as he mis said. Or in the rose, or else in Cresside. Either. The god of love answered her anon. Madam, quoth he, it is so long agone. That I you knew, so charitable and true. That never yet, since that the world was new. To me any found I better none than ye. If that I would save my degree. I may nor will not warn your request, refuse. All lies in you, do with him as you lest. I all forgive without longer space. Delay. For he who gives a gift, or doth a grace. Do it betimes, his thank is well the more, less than twenty-nine greater than. And deem ye what he shall do therefore. A judge. Go thank now my lady here, quoth he. I rose, and down I set me on my knee. And said thus. Madam, the God above. For yield you that ye the God of love reward. Have made me his wraith to forgive. And grace so lunge for to live, give me grace. That I may know soothly what ye be. That have me helped, and put in this degree. But truly I weaned, as in this case. 
Not t have a guilt, nor done to love trespass, offended. For why? A true man, without dread, offense. Hath not to part with a thief's deed. Any share in. Nor a true lover ought me to blame. Though that I spoke a false lover some shame. They ought rather with me for to hold. For that I of Cressida wrote or told. Or of the rose, what so mine author meant. Made a true translation. Allgate, God what, it was mine intent by all ways. To further truth in love, and it cherise, cherish. And to beware from falseness and from vice. By such example, this was my meaning. And she answered. Let be thine arguing. For love will not counterpleaded be less than thirty greater than. In right nor wrong, and learn that of me. Thou hast thy grace, and hold thee right thereto. Now will I say what penance thou shalt do. For thy trespass. And understand it here, offence. Thou shalt, while that thou livest, year by year. The most party of thy time spend. In making of a glorious legend. Of good women, maidens and wives. That were true in loving all their lives. And tell of false men that them betray. That all their life do not but assay. How many women they may do a shame. For in your world that is now held a game. Considered a sport. And though thou like not a lover be, less than thirty one greater than. Speak well of love. This penance give I thee. And to the God of love I shall so pray. That he shall charge his servants, by any way. To further thee, and well thy labor quite, requite. Go now thy way, thy penance is but light. And, when this book ye make, give it the queen. On my behalf, at Eltham, or at Sheen. The God of love gone smile, and then he said. Knowst thou, quoth he, whether this be wife or maid. Or queen, or countess, or of what degree. That hath so little penance given thee. That hath deserved sorely for to smart. But pity runneth soon in gentle heart, less than thirty-two greater than nobly born. That mayst thou see, she kitheth what she is. Showeth. And I answered, Nay, sir, so have I bliss. No more but that I see well she is good. That is a true tale, by my hood. Quoth love, and that thou knowest well, pardi. If it be so that thou advise thee. Bethink. Hast thou not in a book, leth in thy chest, that, lies. The Greek goodness of the queen Alceste. That turned was into a daisy. She that for her husband chose to die. And eke to go to hell rather than he. And Hercules rescued her, pardi. And brought her out of hell again to bliss. And I answered again, and said, yes. Now know I her, and is this good Alceste. The daisy, and mine own heart's rest. Now feel I well the goodness of this wife. That both after her death, and in her life. Her great bounty doubleth her renown. Virtue. Well hath she quit me mine affection recompensed. That I have to her flow are the daisy. No wonder is though Jove her stellify, less than thirty-three greater than. As telleth Agathon, less than thirty-four greater than for her goodness. Her white crown bears of it witness. For all so many virtues had she. As small florons in her crown be. In remembrance of her, and in honor. Sibylle made the daisy, and the floor. White crowned all with white, as men may see. And Mars gave her a crown red, pardi. Instead of rubies set among the white. Therewith this queen waxed red for shame alight. When she was praised so in her presence. Then said love, a full great negligence. Was it to thee, that ilk time thou made that same? Hide Absalom thy tresses, in Balad. That thou forgot her in thy song to set. Since that thou art so greatly in her debt. And knowest well that calendar is she guide, example. To any woman that will love her be. For she taught all the craft of true loving. 
and namely of wifehood the living. Especially. And all the bounds that she ought to keep. Thy little wit was thilk time asleep. That. But now I charge thee, upon thy life. That in thy legend thou make of this wife, poetize, compose. When thou hast other small why made before. And fare now well, I charge thee no more. But ere I go, thus much I will thee tell. Never shall no true lover come in hell. These other ladies, sitting here a row. Be in my ballad, if thou canst them know. And in thy books all thou shalt them find. Have them in thy legend now all in mind. I mean of them that be in thy knowing. For here be twenty thousand more sitting. Than that thou knowest, good women all. And true of love, for aught that may befall. Make the meters of them as thee lest. I must go home, the sun draweth west. To paradise, with all this company. And serve alway the fresh daisy. At Cleopatra I will that thou begin. And so forth, and my love so shalt thou win. For let see now what man, that lover be. Will do so strong a pain for love as she. I wot well that thou mayst not all it rhyme. That such lovers did den in their time. It were too long to redden and to hear. Suffice me thou make in this manner. That thou rehearse of all their life the great, substance. After these old authors list for to treat, according as. For whoso shall so many a story tell. Say shortly, or he shall too lunge dwell. And with that word my books gone I take. And write thus on my legend gone I make. Thus in death the prologue. Notes to the prologue to the legend of good women. 1. Bernard, the monkey, saw not all, pardie. A proverbial saying, signifying that even the wisest, or those who claim to be the wisest, cannot know everything. Saint Bernard, who was the last, or among the last, of the fathers, lived in the first half of the twelfth century. 2. Compare Chaucer's account of his habits, in, The House of Fame. 3. See introductory note to, The Flower and the Leaf. 4. Ye have here before of making ropen, and led away the corn, the meaning is, that the, lovers, have long ago said all that can be said, by way of poetry, or, making, on the subject. See note 89 to, Troilus and Cressida, for the etymology of, making, meaning, writing poetry. 5. The poet glides here into an address to his lady. 6. Europa was the daughter of Aeginors, king of Phrygia. She was carried away to Crete by Jupiter, disguised as a lovely and tame bull, on whose back Europa mounted as she was sporting with her maidens by the seashore. The story is beautifully told in Horace, Odes, 3. 27. 7. See, the assembly of fowls, which was supposed to happen on St. Valentine's Day. 8. The tidife, the titmouse, or any other small bird, which sometimes brings up the cuckoo's young when its own have been destroyed. See note 44 to, the assembly of fowls. 9. Ethic, the ethics, of Aristotle. 10. For as to me is lever none nor lother, I n am withholden yet with neither and other I. E for as neither is more liked or disliked by me, I am not bound by, holden to, either the one or the other. 11. All of another ton i.e. wine of another ton, a quite different matter. 12. Compare the description of the arbor in, the flower and the leaf. 13. Florons, florets, little flowers on the disc of the main flower, French, floron. 14. Mr. Bell thinks that Chaucer here praises the complaisance of Marcia, the wife of Cato, in complying with his will when he made her over to his friend Hortensius. It would be in better keeping with the spirit of the poet's praise, to believe that we should read Portia Catown, Portia the daughter of Cato, who was married to Brutus, and whose perfect wifehood has been celebrated in the Franklin's Tale. See note 25 to the Franklin's Tale. 15. Isud. See note 21 to, The Assembly of Fowls. 16. Levine, Lavinia, the heroine of the Aeneid, who became the wife of Aeneas. 17. Polyxena, daughter of Priam, king of Troy, 
fell in love with Achilles, and, when he was killed, she fled to the Greek camp, and slew herself on the tomb of her hero lover. 18. Mountains, Extent, Duration See Note 84 to The House of Fame. 19. Relic, Emblem, or Cherished Treasure, like the relics at the Shrines of Saints. 20. Lozenger, Deceiver. See Note 31 to The Nun's Priest's Tale. 21. Totaler, is an old form of the word tattler, from the Anglo-Saxon, totilen, to talk much, to tattle. 22. Envy is lavender of the court alway, lavender, is a washerwoman or laundress. The word represents mere trice, in Dante's original, meaning a courtesan, but we can well understand that Chaucer thought it prudent, and at the same time more true to the moral state of the English court, to change the character assigned to envy. He means that envy is perpetually at court, like some garrulous, bitter old woman employed there in the most servile offices, who remains at her post through all the changes among the courtiers. The passage cited from Dante will be found in the Inferno, Canto 13. 64, 69. 23. Chaucer says that the usurping lords who seized on the government of the free Lombard cities, had no regard for any rule of government save sheer tyranny, but a natural lord, and no usurper, ought not to be a tyrant. 24. Farmer, one who merely farms power or revenue for his own purposes and his own gain. 25. This was the first version of the Knight's Tale. See the introductory note, above. 26. Bees, Boethius, De Consolation Philosophiae. To which frequent reference is made in the Canterbury Tales. See, for instances, note 91 to the Knight's Tale, and note 34 to the Squire's Tale. 27. A poem entitled The Lamentation of Mary Magdalene, said to have been taken out of St. Origen, is included in the editions of Chaucer, but its authenticity, and consequently its identity with the poem here mentioned, are doubted. 28. For the story of Alcestis, see note 11 to The Court of Love. 29. For he who gives a gift, or doth a grace. Do it betimes, his thank is well the more. A paraphrase of the well-known proverb, bis dat casido dat. He gives twice who gives promptly. 30. The same prohibition occurs in the 15th statute of, the court of love. 31. Chaucer is always careful to allege his abstinence from the pursuits of gallantry. He does so prominently in, the court of love, the assembly of fowls, and, the house of fame. 32. Pity runneth soon in gentle heart the same is said of Theseus, in the knight's tale, and of Canes, by the falcon, in the squire's tale. 33. Stellify, assigned to a place among the stars, as Jupiter did to Andromeda and Cassiopeia. 34. Agathon, there was an Athenian dramatist of this name, who might have made the virtues and fortunes of Alcestis his theme. But the reference is too vague for the author to be identified with any confidence. Chaucer's a B.C. less than one greater than. Called. L.A. Prior de Noster Dame less than two greater than. A. Almighty and all merciable Queen, all merciful. To whom all this world fleeth for succor. To have release of sin, of sorrow, of teen. Affliction. Glorious Virgin. Of all flowers flow are. To thee I flee, confounded in air are. Help and relieve, almighty debonair, gracious, gentle. Have mercy of my perilous languor. Vanquished me hath my cruel adversary. B. Bounty so fixed hath in thy heart his tent, goodness, charity. That well I what thou wilt my succor be. Thou canst not warn that with good intent refuse he who. Asketh thy help, thy heart is I so free. Thou art largest of plen felicity liberal bestower full. Haven and refuge of quiet and rest. Lo! How that thieves seven less than three greater than chase me. Help, lady bright, ere that my ship to breast. Be broken to pieces. See! Comfort is none, but in you, lady dear. For lo! My sin and my confusion. 
which ought not in thy presence to appear. Have ta'en on me a grievous action, control. A very right and desperation. And, as by right, they might well susteem. That I were worthy my damnation. No were it mercy of you, blissful queen. D. Doubt is there none, queen of misericord, compassion. That thou art cause of grace and mercy here. God vouchsafed, through thee, with us t accord, to be reconciled. For, certes, Christ's blissful mother dear. Were now the bow why bent, in such manner. As it was first, of justice and of ire. The rightful God would have no mercy here. But through thee have we grace as we desire. E. Ever hath my hope of refuge in thee be. For here before full oft in many a wise. Unto mercy hast thou received me. But mercy, lady. At the greatest eyes. When we shall come before the high justice. So little fruit shall then in me be found. That, thou ere that day correct me, unless. A very right my work will me confound. F. Flying, I flee for succor to thy tent. Me for to hide from tempest full of dread. Beseeching you, that ye you not absent. Though I be wick. O oh, help yet at this need. All have I been a beast in wit and deed, although. Yet, lady. Thou me close in with thy grace. Thine enemy and mine, lady, take heed. The devil. Unto my death in point is me to chase. G. Gracious maid and mother. Which that never. Wert bitter nor in ear than nor in sea, less than four greater than. But full of sweetness and of mercy ever. Help, that my father be not wroth with me. Speak thou, for I any dare him not see. So have I done in earth, alas the while. That, certes, but if thou my succor be. To sink a turn he will my ghost exile. H. He vouchsafed, tell him, as was his will. Become a man, as for our alliance, to ally us with God. And with his blood he wrote that blissful bill. Upon the cross, as general acquittance. To every penitent in full creance. Belief. And therefore, Lady Bright. Thou for us pray. Then shalt thou stent and allay his grievance, put an end to. And make our foe to Phelan of his prey. I. I wot well thou wilt be our succor. Thou art so full of bounty in certain. For, when a soul falleth in air hour. Thy pity go to H, and holleth him again. Draweth. Then makest thou his peace with his esoverain. And bringest him out of the crooked street. Whoso thee loveth shall not love in vain. That shall he find as he the life shall lead. When he leaves. Life. K. Calendars illumined be they brilliant exemplars. That in this world be lighted with thy name. And whoso goeth with thee the right way. Him shall not dread in soul to be lame. Now, Queen of Comfort. Since thou art the same. To whom I seek for my medicine. Let not my foe no more my wound and tame. Injure, molest. My heel into thy hand all I resign. L. Lady, thy sorrow can I not portray. Under that cross, nor his grievous penance. But, for your boda's pain, I you do pray. Let not our aller foe make his boa stance, the foe of us all. That he hath in his lists, with mischance, Satan. Convict that ye both have bought so dear. Ensnared that which. As I said erst, thou ground of all substance. Continue on us thy piteous eye in clear. M. Moses, that saw the bush of flames red. Burning, of which then never a stick brand, burned was sign of thine unwemmed maidenhead. Unblemished. Thou art the bush, on which there gone descend. The Holy Ghost, the which that Moses when weaned, supposed. Had been on fire, and this was in figure. Less than five greater than. Now, lady. From the fire us do defend. 
which that in hell eternally shall dure. N. Noble princess. That never haddest peer. Certes if any comfort in us be. That cometh of thee, Christ's mother dear. We have none other melody nor glee, pleasure. Us to rejoice in our adversity. Nor advocate, that will and dare so pray. For us, and for as little higher as ye. That help for an Ave Mary or Tway. O. Oh. O oh, very light of eye and that be blind. O oh, very lust of labor and distress. Relief, pleasure. O oh, treasurer of bounty to mankind. The whom God chose to mother for humbless. From his answer less than six greater than he made the mistress handmaid. Of heaven and earth, our bills up to bead. Offer up our petitions. This world awaiteth ever on thy goodness. For thou any failedst never white at need. P. Purpose I have some time for to enquire. Wherefore and why the Holy Ghost thee sought. When Gabriella's voice came to thine ear. He not to war us such a wonder wrought, afflict. But for to save us, that sit hens us bought. Then needeth us no weapon us to save. But only, where we did not as we ought. Do penitence, and mercy ask and have. Q. Queen of comfort, write when I me bethink. That I aguil to have boda him and thee, offended. And that my soul is worthy for to sink. Alas! I, caitiff, whither shall I flee? Who shall unto thy son my mean be? Medium of approach. Who, but thyself, that art of pity well? Fountain. Thou hast more ruth on our adversity. Then in this world might any tongue tell. R. Redress me, mother, and eke me chastise. For certainly my father's chastising. I dare not abandon in no wise. So hideous is his full reckoning. Mother. Of whom our joy began to spring. Be ye my judge, and eke my soul's leech. Physician. For I in you is pity abounding. To each that will of pity you beseech. S. Sooth is it that he granteth no pity. Without thee, for God of his goodness. Forgiveth none, but it like unto thee. Unless it please. He hath thee made vicar and mistress thee. Of all this world, and eke governess. Of heaven, and represseth his justice. After thy will, and therefore in witness according to. He hath thee crowned in so royal wise. T. Temple devout. Where God chose his wanting, abode. From which, these misbelieved deprived be. To you my soul penitent I bring. Receive me, for I can no farther flee. With thorns venomous, O heaven's queen. For which the earth accursed was full your. I am so wounded, as ye may well see. That I am lost almost, it smarts so sore. V. Virgin. That art so noble of apparel, aspect. That leadest us into the high toar. Of paradise, thou me wis and counsel direct and counsel. How I may have thy grace and thy succor. All have I been in filth and in error. Lady. On that country thou me adjourn, take me to that place. That called is thy bench of fresh floor. There is that mercy ever shall sojourn. X. X less than seven greater than thy son, that in this world alight. Upon a cross to suffer his passion. And suffered eke that longius his heart pite, less than eight greater than pierced. And made his heart blood to run adown. And all this was for my salvation. And I to him am false and eke unkind. And yet he wills not my damnation. This thank I you, succor of all mankind. For this I am. Indebted to you. Why? Isaac was figure of his death certain. That so far forth his father would obey. That him and he wrought nothing to be slain. He cared not. Right so thy son list as a lamb today, die. Now, lady full of mercy. I you pray. 
since he his mercy shewed me so large. Be ye not scant, for all we sing and say. That ye be from vengeance alway our targe. Shield, defense. Z. Zachary you calleth the open well less than nine greater than. That washed sinful soul out of his guilt. Therefore this lesson out I will to tell. That, and ere thy tender heroot, we were spilt. Were it not for. Now, Lady Bright. Since thou canst and wilt, destroyed, undone. Be to the seed of Adam merciable, merciful. Bring us unto that palace that is built. To penitence that be to mercy able. Fit to receive mercy. Explicit. The End. Notes to Chaucer's A B C. 1. Chaucer's A B C. A Prayer to the Virgin, in 23 verses, beginning with the letters of the alphabet in their order, is said to have been written at the request of Blanche, Duchess of Lancaster, as a prayer for her private use. Being a woman in her religion very devout. It was first printed in Spetz edition of 1597. 2. La Prière de Nostre Dame, French, The Prayer of Our Lady. 3. Thieves 7, i.e. The Seven Deadly Sins. 4. Mary's name recalls the waters of Mara, or bitterness, Exodus 15. 23. Or the prayer of Naomi in her grief that she might be called not Naomi, but Mara, Ruth I, 20. Mary, however, is understood to mean exalted. 5. A typical representation. See the Prioress's tale, third stanza. 6. The reference evidently is to Luke I, 38, Eki and Scylla Domini, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, the Virgin's humble answer to Gabriel at the Annunciation. 7. Exp represents the Greek letters Chi Rho Epsilon, and is a contraction for Christ. 8. According to tradition, the soldier who struck the Saviour to the heart with his spear was named Longius, and was blind. But, touching his eyes by chance with the mingled blood and water that flowed down the shaft upon his hands, he was instantly restored to sight. 9. In that day there shall be a fountain open to the house of David and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for uncleanness, Zech 13. 1. A goodly ballad of Chaucer. Less than one greater than. Mother of nurture, best beloved of all. And fresh flow are, to whom good thrift God send. Your child, if it lust you me so to call, please. All be I unable myself so to pretend. Although I be. To your discretion I recommend. My heart and all, with every circumstance. All wholly to be under your governance. Most desire I, and have and ever shall. Thinge which might your heart's ease amend. Have me excused, my power is but small. Nathless, of right, ye ought to commend. My good will, which fame would ent and attend, strive. To do you service. For my sufficence contentment. Is wholly to be under your governance. Meal on in heart which never shall apol, less than two greater than. I fresh and new, and right glad to dispend. My time in your service, what so befall. Beseeching your excellence to defend. My simpleness, if ignorance offend. In any wise. Since that mine affiance. Is wholly to be under your governance. Daisy of light, very ground of comfort. The sun's daughter ye light, as I read. For when he west reth, farewell your disport. By your nature alone, right for pure dread. Of the rude night, that with his boistous weed rude garment. Of darkness shadoweth our hemisphere. Then close ye, my life's lady dear. Dawneth the day unto his kind resort. And Phoebus your father, with his streams red. Adorns the morrow, consuming the sort crowd. Of misty cludes, that would overlaid. True humble hearts with their misty head. Dimness, mistiness. New comfort adaws, when your eye in clear dawns, awakens. Disclose and spread, my life's lady dear. J. E. Vudrais, but the Greek god despiseth, I would wish. And mocketh casual, by his providence. 
such thing as man's fryly wit purposeth. All for the best, if that your conscience. Not grudge it, but in humble patience. It receive. For God saith, without fable. A faithful heart ever is acceptable. Cotels whoso useth gladly, gloseth, cautious speeches. To eschew such it is right high prudence. Deceiveth. What ye said one's mine heart opposeth. That my writing japes in your absence jests, coarse stories. Pleased you much better than my presence. Yet can I more, ye be not excusable. A faithful heart is ever acceptable. Quaketh my pen. My spirit supposeth. That in my writing ye will find offence. Mine hereut welketh thus, anon it riseth, withers, faints. Now hot, now cold, and after in fervence. That is amiss, is caust of negligence. And not of malice. Therefore be merciable. A faithful heart is ever acceptable. L'envoy. For the, complaint. Fourth, lacking eloquence. Fourth little letter, of indicting lame. I have besought my lady's sapience. On thy behalf, to accept in game. Thine inability. Do thou the same. Abide. Have more yet. J. E. Serve joyous. I serve joy. Now forth, I close thee in holy Venus name. Thee shall unclose my heart's governess. Notes to a goodly ballad of Chaucer. 1. This elegant little poem is believed to have been addressed to Margaret, Countess of Pembroke, in whose name Chaucer found one of those opportunities of praising the daisy he never lost. Transcribers note, modern scholars believe that Chaucer was not the author of this poem. 2. Mew un in heart which never shall apall, better one who in heart shall never pall, whose love will never weary. A ballad sent to King Richard. Sometime this world was so steadfast and stable. That man's word was held obligation. And now it is so false and deceivable, deceitful. That word and work, as in conclusion. Be nothing one. For turned up so down. Is all this world, through meed and willfulness, bribery. That all is lost for lack of steadfastness. What makes this world to be so variable? But lust that folk have in dissension. Pleasure. For nowadays a man is held unable fit for nothing. But if he can, by some collusion, unless fraud, trick. Do his neighbor wrong or oppression. What causeth this but willful wretchedness? That all is lost for lack of steadfastness. Truth is put down, reason is holden fable. Virtue hath now no domination. Pity exiled, no white is merciable. Through covetise is blent discretion. Blinded. The world hath made permutation. From right to wrong, from truth to fickleness. That all is lost for lack of steadfastness. L'envoy. O Prince. Desire to be honorable. Cherish thy folk, and hate extortion. Suffer nothing that may be reprovable a subject of reproach. To thine estate, done in thy region, kingdom. Show forth the sword of castigation. Dread God, do law, love thorough worthiness. And wed thy folk again to steadfastness. L'envoy of Chaucer to Buckton. Less than one greater than. My master Buckton, when of Christ our King. Was asked, What is truth or soothfastness? He not a word answered to that asking. As who saith, No man is all true, I guess. And therefore, though I hike to express promised. The sorrow and woe that is in marriage. I dare not write of it no wickedness. Lest I myself fall eft in such dotage. Again folly. I will not say how that it is the chain. Of satanas, on which he gnaweth ever. But I dare say, were he out of his pain. As by his will he would be bound in never. But thilk dot fool that eft had lever that. Why chained be, then out of prison creep. God let him never from his woe dissever. Nor no man him bewail though he weep. But yet, 
lest thou do worse, take a wife. Bed is to wed than burn in worse wise, less than two greater than. But thou shalt have sorrow on thy flesh thy life, all thy life. And be thy wife's thrall, as say these wise. And if that holy writ may not suffice. Experience shall thee teach a, so may hap. That thee were lever to be taken in frise, less than three greater than. Then f to fall of wedding in the trap. Again. This little writ, proverbs, or figure. I send you. Take keep of it, I read. Heed. Unwise is he that can no will endure. If thou be sicker, put thee not in dread, in security danger. The wife of Bath I pray you that you read. Of this matter which that we have on hand. God grant a you your life freely to lead. In freedom, for full hard is to be bond. Notes to Lenvoy of Chaucer to Buckton. 1. Turwit, founding on the reference to the wife of Bath, places this among Chaucer's latest compositions. And states that 1 Peter de Buckton held the office of King's as cheater for Yorkshire in 1397. In some of the old editions, the verses were made the envoy to the book of the Duchess Blanche, in very bad taste, when we consider that the object of that poem was to console John of Gaunt under the loss of his wife. 2. But if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. 1 Cor 7. 9. 3. Lever to be taken in Frise, better to be taken prisoner in Friesland, where probably some conflict was raging at the time. A Ballad of Gentleness. The first stockfather of gentleness, less than one greater than. What man desireth gentle for to be? Must follow his trace, and all his wit's dress, apply. Virtue to love, and vices for to flee. For unto virtue longeth dignity. And not the reverse, safely dare I deem. All where he mitre, crown, or diadem. Whether he wear. This first stock was full of righteousness. True of his word, sober, pious, and free. Clean of his ghost, and loved business, pure of spirit. Against the vice of sloth, in honesty. And, but his heir love virtue as did he. He is not gentle, though he reach seem. All where he mitre, crown, or diadem. Vice may well be heir to old Rickess. But there may no man, as men may well see. Bequeath his heir his virtuous noblesse. That is appropriate to no degree, specially reserved. But to the first father in majesty. Which makes his heir him that doth him queen, please. All where he mitre, crown, or diadem. Notes to a Ballad of Gentleness. 1. The first stockfather of gentleness, Christ. The complaint of Chaucer to his purse. To you, my purse, and to none other white. Complain I, for ye be my lady dear. I am sorry now that ye be so light. For certes ye now make me heavy cheer. Me were as leaf be laid upon my bier. For which unto your mercy thus I cry. Be heavy again, or else must I die. Now vouchsafe this day, ere it be night. That I of you the blissful sound may hear. Or see your color like the sun bright. That of yellowness had peer. Ye be my life. Ye be my heart's steer. Rudder. Queen of comfort and of good company. Be heavy again, or else must I die. Now, purse. That art to me my life's light. And savor, as down in this world here. Out of this town help me through your might. Since that you will not be my treasurer. For I am shave as nigh as any frere. Less than one greater than. But now I pray unto your courtesy. Be heavy again, or else must I die. Chaucer's envoy to the king. O conqueror of brutes Albion, less than two greater than. Which by lineage and free election. Be very king, this song to you I send. And ye which may all mine harm amend. Have mind upon my supplication. Notes to the complaint of Chaucer to his purse. 1. 
I am shave as nigh as any frere, i.e., I am as bare of coin as a friar's tonsure of hair. 2. Brute, or Brutus, was the legendary first king of Britain. Good counsel of Chaucer. Less than one greater than. FLEE from the press, and dwell with soothfastness. Suffice thee thy good, though it be small. For hoard hath hate, and climbing tickleness, instability. Press hath envy, and weal is blent o'er all, prosperity is blinded. Savor no more than thee behove shall. Have a taste for. Read well thyself, that other folk canst read, counsel. And truth thee shall deliver, it is no dread. Doubt. Pain thee not each crooked to redress. In trust of her that turneth as a ball. Less than two greater than. Great rest standeth in little business. Beware also to spurn against a nail, less than three greater than. Strive not as doth a crock with a wall, earth and pot. Deem thyself that deemest others deed, judge. And truth thee shall deliver, it is no dread. What thee is sent, receive in buxomness, submission. The wrestling of this world asketh a fall. Here is no home, here is but wilderness. Fourth, pilgrim. For the beast, out of thy stall. Look up on high, and thank thy God of all. Weave thy lust, and let thy ghost thee lead, forsake thy. And truth thee shall deliver, it is no dread. Inclinations. Spirit. Notes to Good Counsel of Chaucer. 1. This poem is said to have been composed by Chaucer, upon his deathbed, lying in anguish. 2. Her that turneth as a ball, fortune. 3. To spurn against a nail, against the pricks. Proverbs of Chaucer. Less than one greater than. What should these clothes thus manifold? Lo! This hot summer's day. After great heat cometh cold. No man cast his pilch away. Police, furred cloak. Of all this world the large compass. Will not in mine arms twain. Who so mush will embrace. Little thereof he shall distrain. Grasp. The world so wide, the air so remuable, unstable. The silly man so little of stature. The green of ground and clothing so mutable. The fire so hot and subtle of nature. The water never in one, what creature never the same. That maid is of these four less than two greater than thus flitting. May steadfast be, as here, in his living. The more I go, the farther I am behind. The farther behind, the nearer my war's end. The more I seek, the worse can I find. The lighter leave, the lother for to wend, less than three greater than. The better I live, the more out of mind. Is this fortune, noti, or in fortune, I know not misfortune. Though I go loose, tied am I with a loin. Line, tether. Notes to Proverbs of Chaucer. 1. Transcriber's Note Modern scholars believe that Chaucer's may have been the author of the first stanza of this poem, but was not the author of the second and third. 2. These four, that is, the four elements, of which man was believed to be composed. 3. The lighter leave, the lother for to wend, the more easy, through age, for me to depart, the less willing I am to go. Virile. Less than one greater than. Alone walking. In thought plaining. And sore sighing. All desolate. Me remembering. Of my living. My death wishing. Both early and late. Infortunate. Is so my fate. That, what ye what. Out of measure. My life I hate. Thus desperate. In such poor estate. Do I endure. Of other cure. Am I not sure. Thus to endure. Is hard, certain. Such is my your, destiny less than two greater than. I you ensure. What creature. May have more pain. My truth so plain. Is taken in vain. And great disdain. In remembrance. 
yet I full fain. Would me complain. Me to abstain. From this penance. But, in substance. None allegiance alleviation. Of my grievance. Can I not find. Right so my chance. With displeasance. Doth me advance. And thus an end. Notes to Virile. 1. Transcribers note, modern scholars believe that Chaucer was not the author of this poem. 2. Your, Hewer, or Destiny, the same word that enters into Bonheur and Malheur. French, Happiness and Unhappiness. Since I from love. Less than one greater than. Since I from love escaped am so fat. I ne'er think to be in his prison tame. Since I am free, I count him not a bean. He may answer, and say this and that. I do no force, I speak right as I mean. Care not. Since I from love escaped am so fat. Love hath my name struck out of his slat, slate, list. And he is struck out of my books clean. Forevermore, there is none other mean. Since I from love escaped am so fat. Notes to Since I from Love. 1. Transcribers note, modern scholars believe that Chaucer was not the author of this poem. Chaucer's words to his Scrivener. Adam Scrivener, if ever it thee befall. Beast or Troilus for to write anew. Under thy long locks thou mayst have the skull scab. But after my making thou write more true. According to my. So oft a day I must thy work renew, composing. It to correct, and eke to rub and scrape. And all is through thy negligence and rape. Haste. Chaucer's prophecy. Less than one greater than. When priests failen in their saws, come short of there. And lords turn God's law's profession. Against the right. And lechery is holden as privy solace, secret delight. And robbery as free purchase. Beware then of ill. Then shall the land of Albion turn to confusion, as sometime it befell. Ora pro Anglia Sancta Maria, quot Thomas Cantuaria. Less than two greater than. Sweet Jesus, heaven's king. Fair and best of all thing. You bring us out of this morning. To come to thee at our ending. Notes to Chaucer's Prophecy. 1. 